When copper ore is mined, there's the usual problem of separating the metal from all the other material in the ore. Smelting produces so-called blister copper, which contains about 2% of various impurities. Someone realised that electroplating gives you a way to separate the copper from the impurities. This is the impure copper cast into blocks. If you make them the anode and use blocks of pure copper as the cathode, let's see what we have in the cell. In the anode, there will be atoms of copper and of impurities such as iron, tin, lead and small amounts of silver and gold. The electrolyte used is sulfuric acid. The cathode contains only copper atoms. Whoever thought up this process obviously knew their electrochemical series. A small voltage will be enough to drag electrons from the more reactive metals, including copper, converting them to ions which move into the electrolyte. With several ions in the solution, the question is which ones will migrate to the cathode and accept electrons? The electrochemical series shows us that copper is the strongest oxidant in the solution, so it's only the copper ions that grab electrons and plate onto the cathode. Our copper is now refined, but it gets better. Remember that impurities in the anode include gold and silver? These are both unreactive metals. The voltage is kept deliberately low, so low that it won't drag electrons from the gold and silver atoms and convert them to ions. And look what happens. As the impure copper block dissolves, particles of gold and silver sink to the bottom of the cell. The voltage is critical. It's set to make sure you only get the reaction you want. So with the correct settings, Copper electro-refining is a win-win situation. Not only does it produce copper of high purity, at the same time it separates out the gold and silver, commercially valuable even in trace amounts. <laughs>